and amen. Well, hey, I love being in a church that loves to be together, love the fellowship of the saints, but y'all, it's time to stop talking and go find your seat. Come on, and while you're doing that, I'm going to take a moment to greet uh, everybody watching online right now. So glad to have you joining us. Uh, those in Prophetstown, can we give a big uh, round warm welcome to our Prophetstown <laughs> campus? Man, just praying you experience the presence of the Lord in an incredible way today. And uh, I've got a special treat for you uh, today. I've got uh, my coach, my pastor, one of my dearest friends. And uh, some of you are excited already because he was here uh, several months ago. Uh, Dr. Sam Farina is in the house. Give him a big River Church welcome. And I'm telling you, this is a big deal for Clinton, Iowa, okay? Like, I've, I've, I've talked to Sam a couple times this week. I called him the first time he was in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Yeah, and he was pre, what do you say, like six, seven hours a day? Yeah. Yeah. They, they only wanted me to do six to seven hours of teaching a day. That's it. Yeah, just a, just a light day of teaching. Five, at, five days. Five days, yeah. I needed this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so then he gets he goes from Sri Lanka. Then I call him uh, the next time, and you were in what Albuquerque, New Mexico. New Mexico yeah, yeah, speaking to district council, and now here he is in Clinton. That's a busy week right there, and uh, we are we're blessed to have Sam here. And uh, hey, I'm just going to ask you to lean in, give him a big uh, River Church a welcome, and remember, preachers always preach better when you preach back. So yeah. feel free to get a little excited. Show him some love. Get your Bibles out. And, uh, man, be expectant for a word from the Lord today. Uh, well, thank you so very, very much. I don't think there is a week that I love better than from Palm Sunday to Easter. There, this is what it's all about. And I want you to look with me at the book of Luke, okay? So get your Bibles out. And uh, we're going to look at this incredible story that you've heard many, many times. But I want you to see a couple things that when I began to look at this story, uh, it... It, it rocked my view of what took place during the triumphal entry. And I've titled, I've actually titled this the re-entry. Say that word. Yeah, the word re, when you add it to a word, it means it's back or it, it, it returned or it's again, okay? And... I want you to see the re in this story, okay? And why I titled it the re-entry, you're going to see right here, and they're going to put up on the screen the scriptures so that you can see this and understand this. And I want you to follow this because when Jesus comes in on that donkey, he is bringing back what had left. Did you hear me? He's bringing back what had left. And I want you to understand that, and I want you to see this, because it is absolutely incredible. If you were to look back at the book of Ezekiel, you would find that the prophet Ezekiel watches the glory of God leave the temple. Now, in the temple, there was the Ark of the Covenant, and in the Ark of the Covenant was the power and presence of God. And whenever, whenever Israel would get in trouble, they'd bring out the Ark of the Covenant, and sure enough, they'd win the victory. One time, the Ark of the Covenant was stolen by another nation, and it knocked over their gods. The power of God knocked over their statues of their gods. Actually, sickness came to people because they had taken the presence of God, the power of God, and the Ark and they returned it. They sent it back. 
But Ezekiel sees something that was unthinkable. Because of the sin of the people, they're turning their backs on God. They're turning the faith that they celebrated into a mechanical religion because they were worshiping idols at the same time that they were worshiping God, Ezekiel looks and sees the unthinkable. The presence of God rises up. And I want you to look with me and see this in the chapters 10 through 12 of Ezekiel, you will see this event and why the power and presence of God left the temple, left the Ark of the Covenant. And when Babylon comes to capture, uh, overtake the Israeli people, and they go into the temple, they take all of the cups of gold and all of the, and probably took the Ark of the Covenant. We don't know. It may have been hidden. But I can tell you this. There was no power there to defend the people because the presence of God had left. Look with me at Ezekiel 11. And you will see the departure of the presence of God. So I want you to read this because it said, Then the cherubim lifted up their wings with the wheels beside them, and the glory of God of Israel was over them. Now you've got to picture this. This is a, an incredible sight. Cherub, the the angel that we sometimes think about with the wings and the whole deal lifted up their wings the wheels now this is this is the chariot of god the throne of god and whenever you see god the ancient of days god the father he never leaves his throne okay he never leaves his throne his throne has wheels and wherever God is in the Bible, he comes on his throne with the wheels. So when he came down to Babel, he came on this chariot, this throne that he never leaves. He always is seated on his throne. And he comes up out of the Ark of the Covenant. And look at this as we read on. Next slide. I want you to see this and I want you to understand this because the presence of God rises up and goes to the eastern gate of the city. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood on the mountain that is east of the city, which was the Mount of Olives. Now, once it leaves the city through the eastern gate, and it's very specific, it goes up to the Mount of Olives, and it says that the presence and power of God lifted and went, it vanished, it disappeared off of the Mount of Olives and was gone. Do you understand what that meant? Gone. The power and presence of God that protected them, that they brought the sacrifices into the temple because the power and presence of God was supposed to be there, but now is not there. Until, until, you ready? Look at Luke 19, verse 28. And when he had said these things, he went ahead going to Jerusalem. 
Who is this? Jesus. Jesus now goes heading to Jerusalem. And when they drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the what? Where? Oh, oh. The power of God leaves off the Mount of Olives. And God is so incredible that when the power of God housed in Jesus shows up, he comes down from the Mount of Olives. Are you ready? <laughs> he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village in front of you where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it, bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away, found it, just as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, what did people do? What does it say they did? They spread what in front of them? No, it doesn't say palm branches. Read the text. You're going to be shocked. You see, we celebrate it as Palm Sunday. Nothing wrong with that. But that is not what they laid in front of Jesus. What'd they lay? Their cloaks. Their cloaks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, gang. Wait a minute. Have we messed a little something here? We have. Why did they lay their cloaks on the ground in front of Jesus? How many are ready to learn something new this Palm Sunday? See, you've, you've just gone with the mechanical religious talk of the palms. But the text says they laid their cloaks in the road in front of Jesus. In that day, they had heard that Jesus was the healer. They had heard of all the miracles, and they had just heard of the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead. The word had spread, and all the beggars the blind, those who were handicapped, were lining the roads. They always were at the entrance to Jerusalem, lining the roads, but they were out in numbers today. And you could not, listen to this, you could not beg on the roads unless you had been issued a cloak which signified what it was that was wrong with you so that people knew, watch this, you did not go up and give money to lepers. Why? Because it's a contagious disease. How many of you understand that with all the masks over the last year? They had leprosy, and I'm telling you, leprosy is a, is a, it's a killer. Eventually, leprosy takes the extremities of your body and it causes them to die. It's a, it's a tragic disease. Thank God we have, we have conquered it. But in that day, it was the cancer of that day. But it was contagious. And... You did not go near them, but you felt like you needed to help them. 
So they were given a certain color cloak, and you threw the money at lepers. But how many of you know you don't throw money at blind people? Does that make sense? So they were given a different color cloak. And if they had that color cloak on, you knew they were blind, so you would go up to the blind person and you would put the coin in the cup so they would hear it hit the bottom so that they knew there was money to help them. They didn't have, they didn't have welfare. They didn't have Medicaid. They didn't have all the programs we have today. Nobody sent out $300 checks for every child they had. Are you listening to me? They were living in a day where they depended on the gifts of people that came down the road that were travelers coming into Jerusalem. They heard Jesus was coming, and they came out in droves, and they made a decision that they were going to trust him. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You throw that cloak onto the ground and you have been issued that cloak in order to beg. What's going to happen to that cloak if you leave it out there on the ground? Somebody's going to grab it so that they can cheat and beg using that cloak even though they really don't have that condition. Come on, how many know there were crooks in that day just like today? If they took that cloak off, how are they going to go and get a new one? They were saying, we are going to trust you, Lord. We believe that you have the power that we have seen you heal others with. And we're going to lay our cloaks down in front of you and believe that you are going to heal us. They cried out. What was the word? What was the word? They cried out. What does Hosanna mean? It means save us. It means save us. Say the word. Yeah, that's what it meant. Hosanna. We think it's a praise word. No, it's a cry for help. Hosanna, Hosanna. In other words, when they threw their cloak down, they were believing for Jesus to bring healing and save them from the condition that they were in. How many are ready to lay your cloak down today? How many of you are ready to quit trusting in yourself? How many of you are ready to say, Jesus, this Easter, I'm going to put my trust in you. I'm going to bring all my needs. I'm going to bring all my addictions. I'm going to bring all my sickness. I'm going to bring everything that I need, and I'm going to cry out, Hosanna, and today I'm trusting you and I'm throwing aside, I'm laying it down in the road, everything I've trusted in up to this point. Some of you have trusted in family, you've trusted in religion, you've trusted in government, you've trusted in, you've trusted your job, you've trusted, eh, we've got all kinds of stuff that we put our trust in. And today, he's saying, lay down your cloak and put your trust in me. Now, this is incredible as you read this story because the glory left out the eastern gate and rose up to heaven off the Mount of Olives and Jesus comes down from the Mount of Olives, gets on this colt that's never been ridden. How many of you, this is a miracle in itself. 
that he's sitting on that colt that's never been ridden. Hey, I'd like want to see you try that. That thing will buck you off. Throw, no, no, no. This, the creator with the power of God in him, the power that created that animal was sitting on that animal, and that animal knew it, felt it, and I'm here to tell you it never bucked once. Look at this. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that he had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Listen to me. Don't be less than the stones. Did you hear what I just said? Don't be less than the stones today. You are in the presence of the power of God. What I sensed as we were singing earlier, the power of God is here today. Jesus has come into this place. And I'm here to tell you, we are not going to be less than the stones. We are going to cry out. We are going to cry Hosanna. We are going to cry praise God. We are going to cry, I've seen what you've done in my life. Listen to me. The last time I was here, I told you about my stage four cancer. But I'm here to tell you that the last test they did, there is no cancer in my my body, there is no need for any more medication. God has healed me. You think I'm going to sit around and say, well, it's nice to be in church today. I, 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 God, I know that I, I know you're glad I'm here. I, it was sure a big thing for me to get out and get here. And uh, you know, God, uh, you ought to think about it. We had to get all the kids dressed and get them over here and Get over it. You need to be thankful that you're, that you're in the presence of the power of God. And you need to think about what do I need to throw off so that I can receive what I need in my life today? What do you need to throw on the ground so that you will walk out of here changed by the power of God today? What about it, teenager? What about it? What are you trusting in, mom, dad? What are you trusting in? Why don't you just put your whole trust in the Lord and see what he does for you? Look at this. It is amazing. Because Jesus sees Jerusalem and begins to weep. He weeps over the city. Why? Because they weren't responding to the things of God. They had no presence of God, no power of God. They were going through mechanical religious exercises. And he weeps. And guess how he enters the city? Through the eastern gate. The very place the presence and power of God left from, he comes down from the Mount of Olives and goes into the eastern gate and goes immediately to the temple where the power of God left. I, I, you know what, folks? Some, some of you ought to get a little bit excited about this. Some of you need to understand the power of this. Because the presence and power of God now was in Jesus Christ. The, the God himself comes back into the city the very way he left. 
He comes down. People are out there in the road throwing off their cloaks, and God is doing a work. Jesus is doing a work in the lives of those people, and he goes right into the temple, and I love this. He looks around and he said, everybody is welcome here. And they had set up all kinds of roadblocks to people being able to get into the temple. They were charging. They were selling sheep. They were doing all kinds of business stuff out there keeping the average Joe from getting into the temple, and Jesus threw them all out, and he said, from this day forward, everybody, I don't care who you are or how bad you've been or whether you've got money or don't have money, you are welcome. My house is a house of prayer. And the power of God entered back, but not to stay in a box. Next week, this week Friday, where does the power of God go? To the cross. Think about this. The power of God goes to the cross and lays himself down on the cross. For who? For who? For you and me. For us. Think about this. The power of God that defended Israel. The power of God that caused, caused hundreds to, to be slaughtered in the battles because they tried to attack Israel and Israel was defended. The power of God that was so that nothing could stop now lays himself upon the cross. But that power didn't leave his body when he died. And when they put him in that tomb, guess what happens? The power of God blows the rock away. And out walks Jesus. And says, you thought you had me, but you didn't. Are you listening to me today? Are you ready to rejoice? Are you ready to throw down whatever it is you've been relying upon? Are you ready? Are you ready today to receive to receive <laughs> and rejoice as the power of God returns because do you know what Jesus said when he ascended to heaven? I'm going to send the power that used to be in the box and now dwells in me is going to dwell in you. The same power that raised me from the dead will dwell where? In you. <laughs> it's going to dwell in you. He's going to dwell in you and you and you and you. Yeah. I like that kid. Don't be like the rocks. Don't be less than the rocks. See, if they wouldn't have been praising God, Jesus said the very rocks would cry out. Why? Because he created it all. The power of God is here. He's here tonight. Would you bow your heads with me all over this room today? On this Palm Sunday, Jesus has entered the house. Jesus has walked in. The power is resident. It's here. He's here. The Holy Spirit is here. The Father is watching us today. 
the Godhead is here. Number one question. What have you been trusting in besides Jesus that's kept you from surrendering your life to Christ? What is it? What's kept you? What stopped you from surrendering your life to Jesus? What is it today? I'm going to count to three. And if you're here today and you say, Sam, I need to throw off what I've been trusting in and surrender my life to Jesus, whether it's in a new way or for the very first time. When I get to three, if you want to throw off whatever's been keeping you from surrender to the power and presence and person of Jesus Christ, when I get to three, throw your hands straight up in the air. Don't hesitate. Don't hold back. It's like you're throwing off your cloak in the road just like they did on that first Palm Sunday. On this Palm Sunday weekend, you're going to throw it off by raising your hand straight up in the air. And when you do, Jesus is going to see it and he's going to respond to you. Are you ready? Right now, get ready to throw it off by throwing your hand into the air. If you need Jesus for the first time or in a new way today, I want you to throw your hand straight up. One two, three. Lift it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, he sees your hand. He sees your hand. He sees your response. He loves you. He loves you. You may take it down. Would everyone in the room stand with me today? And would you pray with these that have lifted their hand? We're going to pray together. All of us, we're going to pray together. On this Palm Sunday Eve, we're going to pray together. Let's pray out loud. Jesus, thank you that you're not angry at me, that you haven't given up on me. You're not disappointed in me. You see everything about me. But most of all, you saw my response today. My heart is open to you. I need you, Jesus. I need your power. I need your presence. I need your forgiveness. I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need you more than anything. Thank you, Jesus. You hear my cry, and today I'm leaving here changed. I'm throwing off what I trusted in. I'm trusting in you from this day forward. I'm trusting in your word. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just thank him all over this room. Just thank him. How many of you need healing today? How many of you are here and you say, Sam, I know the greatest miracle is salvation, but I need Jesus to touch and heal me like some of those blind people that threw their cloaks off and some of the deaf and some of those that were lepers that threw their cloaks off on that day. I need to throw off everything I'm trusting in right now, and I need to believe for God to heal me. If that's the case, would you do this? I want you to take a big step. I want you all over this room, if you need a touch of healing or a touch in your mind or a touch in your marriage or a miracle in your finance, a miracle in different ways, can, whether it's healing, if you need God's power to do something miraculous in you, I want you to just throw both hands up towards heaven and I want you to let him see it. He sees those hands. He sees your heart. He sees your need. Jesus, today, all over this room, you are going to do a work of the miraculous. Your power is here. 
You are going to heal. You are going to touch. You are going to move mountains that are in the way of people today. Lord, doctors are going to give testimony of what happened here in this room today. Come on, if you see people with hands up, move over towards them and just lay your hand on their shoulder. Come on, we're going to pray for one another. If you see people with their hands up, come on, just move over there and just put your hand gently on their shoulder or on their arm and we're going to believe for the miraculous today. This is a miracle poem Sunday weekend. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you today. You are here. You are here. Just begin to sing it all over this room today. I believe you're the one.